Hello, welcome to Blender Game Master. I'm Douglas E. Knapp, and today we're going to be doing an overview of Blender's sequential video editor. So to start with, you need to get it. So go here to um, blender.org and click on this little icon here to download the system you need. Um, depending on what you want, you probably want a 64-bit system. And yeah, you can pick whatever is right for your computer. So after you've do downloaded it, just do the install, and then you're all set. I also want to point out here at blender.org, manual, editors, sequence, sequence, sequencer, it says, um, introduction.html. Uh, there's a complete manual that's just recently been redone for the video sequence editor. Um, if you find a bug in this place, a typo or any problem, please file a bug report. We have bug reports for the program and bug reports for the manual. Okay, now to the next part. We've booted it up, and yours probably won't come out looking exactly like mine because I've modified mine a lot. Um, you'll probably have a big square here and other things. Um, but to start with, we're going to go to User Preferences and click on system and uh, first I'm going to make this a hundred so you can see better um, okay so right here we have the device it's defaulted to none you want to put it to Hue data and then pick out your graphics card from the list the other thing is the cache limit it's usually very small and you want to have as much memory as possible when doing video work I have 16 gigabytes so I put mine to 10 gigabytes. As you can see, it's in megabytes. And when that's done, just save your user settings. Close the window. And you're all ready to go. OK, this is the default screen. Also, you notice the colors are different because I'm using a, the scientific theme. Um, so anyway, we're here. We'll go over here. We'll set this to the X and Y resolution that you want your video to render at. We're going to pick out the, fl the fl frame rate. I can't speak today. The frame rate um, that you recorded at. My camera is running at 24 frames per second. And then we want to make sure that we're outputting to the correct folder. I'm outputting to my um, fastest hard drive here. And I've picked this video format. It's, it defaults to NPEG, I think, and for doing a film, you're probably going to want to use H.264. Um, there are cases where you want to output your film as a sequence of images. For example, if you're rendering and each image takes an hour to render, you definitely want to re uh, output each individual um, image and then later convert that to a video file. It allows you to stop in the middle and restart, which you couldn't do with a video file. Um, then we got to look at encoding. Uh, I'm using AVI. I'm using the H264 um, uh, codec. And the GOP should be half of your frame rate. So I have a frame rate of 24, so I put 12 in. The rest is pretty obvious. Um, watch out, this often comes defaulted to none, no audio. So you do want to pick out AAC or maybe MP3, whatever. So when all that's taken care of, we're going to come over here, and right here it says Default. We want to go to Video Editing. Now this is the video editing scene. This window here shows your current video output. This is your animation editor. This down here is your video editing area, and this is your timeline. And this is for what's, what frame you're currently on. So I'm going to load up a project I was working on. Okay, I'm on uh, Patreon, and uh, if you can give me a dollar for every video I make, that will really help me to continue producing films, and hopefully I'll be able to do full-time tutorials if I get enough supporters. So that's very important to me. So I made this uh, little short video to talk about that. Um, to start with here, you can see this is where you can see the video, and if I scrub along, you can see the video playing. Um, over here, I've added this window. You do that by clicking, and you can split. You can split an area. 
Or what do I want to split? We'll just split this one, it's easy. Um, here. We'll split the area. You can see this line is where it's going to split. And now you have two little sub windows. If you want to put them back together, you click again and join the arrow. The arrow. You can go up or down and join them to make them back into one. And then you can change what's in that window by clicking here and having the different options. So I've changed this, as you can see, to properties, so that I can change things like my output and stuff on the fly. That's not in the default view. Okay, so press uh, number pad comma, and it puts everything viewable, or I think it puts what's selected in, in a full view. So middle, scrolling, scroll out, and you can see I have here a sound file. This is Awakening that I downloaded from YouTube. They have lots of free open source music and sound effects you can get. Um, here is a video along with this. These two together are a movie. Um, this here you can see is, is this uh, image, my logo. And this is an effect. If I scroll up, you'll see it's a gamma cross. So, the thing that you're probably going to want to do, first of all, is add stuff. So to add stuff, you go Shift A, and we can add a movie. You select your movie. I'm not going to do one because I already have one there. Um, you can also add in an image, like my card. You can add in a sound, you know, like a, a song or whatever. Um, and many other things. Um, so then once you have it here, you're probably going to want to cut it. Like you can see I cut off a bunch of the sound. To cut, you just select the strip by right-clicking. That's important. Blender is a right-click, not a left-click like you might be used to. Now you put your green line, and this is a left-click to move the green line, where you want to cut. And then you can go here to Strips, come up to Soft Cut. Soft Cut cuts it, but it actually doesn't get rid of the data. Hard Cut gets rid of the data. So this is kind of like an undo almost. It's most of the time if you've got the memory you should use the soft cut. So I cut it and you can see it's now cut it into two strips. I can now take this strip, I can use G to grab it, or I can just right click on it and there. So you right click on it and then you right click again and you can grab it, move it around where you want. Escape freeze it. Ah. Uh, Control Z undoes, un does undo. There, so I've undone my cut, back to normal. Um, oh yeah, also in in the preferences, you might want to turn up your undo settings. They're quite low at, at default settings. So once we have a strip, we can select it. We can do Shift D to duplicate. Now we have two strips. And we can move it to where we want and set it down. You can also use Shift to move things more slowly and precisely. You can use Control so that it sets it like right here. It's right even with that strip. Or if I go down here, it's even with that strip. So those, those are very handy. I'm going to use Escape so it goes back to where it was. Um, It actually doesn't go back to where it kind of undoes it because I didn't actually set it down. It doesn't finish the process and it's undone. Um, the next thing we can look at, if you click on a sound strip, you can go down here to view and you can show the waveform. That's very helpful sometimes if you're trying to, uh, for example, find a place where there's a clapper clap and you want to cut right at that spot. Um, The other thing that we'll look at here is that if you want to do a fade, if I'm going to fade from this strip to this strip, you have, need to select this one, press shift, select this one, and then add in your effect strip. Like in this case, I have a gamma cross. I've already got one there, so I won't do it, but that's how you set it. I'd click this, and it would add in the gamma clip. This little knob allows you to move things. You can see where these things up here that I don't want are there. To get rid of them, you use X, or you can select it and use Delete. And you can see this is a gamma cross here where it fades. And a cut is obvious. And what it does is just cut from one thing to another. Down here, 
um, I've added in a color. If I do Shift A, Effect Strip, Color, you can add in a color. We'll change this one to purple to make it look different. So I'm going to delete it so we don't need a purple strip. But what I'm doing here is I have black, and here I have my um, card that says support me on Patreon. And here's a gamma cross, and you can see that I'm fading to black. Very common feature. Most film editing is done with fade to black, or a gamma cross, or just plain sharp cut. Um, the other um, effect strips, the speed controls, you can do slow motion, that can be very important. Adding text, uh, text can be very important, and this is fast. If you want to, you can use Blender itself to do fancy text. And the rest should be pretty self-evident. I recommend that you uh, find a video on multicam selector. That's complicated and a fantastically powerful feature. Um, now I'm going to look at my list, see what I haven't done. Yeah, I think that about covers it. Um, the only thing I'd like to add is that Blender has a fantastically powerful compositor, which allows you to do all, all sorts of compositing effects. It also has um, the movie editor and motion tracker, which lets you do things like uh, add in add in a Blender generated car to a parking lot, whatever. These type of uh, typical Hollywood effects, they can all be done with Blender. On top of that, Blender, of course, can do animation and 3D graphics. And it can also do 3D sound. It can move things around um, by attaching sound to objects and flying them around and positioning the sound correctly in the sound field. If you have any questions, please let me know. Um, please support me on social media, YouTube, Facebook, whatever else. And please go to Patreon and sign up and make a donation. If you have any other questions or want to know anything, please leave a message and I'll do my best to answer all of the messages on YouTube that you leave. And I think that's about it. Thank you.